Good morning everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Wednesday, June 5th, 2024. Our reading today comes to us from Joshua chapter 24, reading from verse 2 to 15. And it says, And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old times, even Terah, the father of Abram, and the father of Nacor, and they served other gods. And I took your father Abram from the other side of the flood, and led him throughout all the land of Canaan, and multiplied his seed, and gave him Isaac. And I gave unto Isaac Jacob and Esau, and I gave unto Esau Mount Seir, to possess it, but Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. And I sent Moses also an Aaron, and I plague Egypt according to that which I did among them. And afterward I brought you out. And I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and ye came unto the sea. And the Egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and horsemen unto the Red Sea. And when they cried unto the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, and brought the Red Sea upon them, and covered them. And your eyes have seen what I have done in Egypt, and he dwelt in in the wilderness a long season. And I brought you into the land of the Amorites, which dwelt on the other side of Jordan. And they fought with you, and I gave them into your hand, and that ye might possess their land, and I destroyed them from before you. Then Bela, the son of Zephor, king of Moab, arose and warned against Israel, and sent and called Balaam, the son of Beor, to curse you. But I would not hearken unto Balaam. Therefore he blessed you still, so I delivered you out of his hand. And you went over Jordan, and came unto Jericho, and the men of Jericho fought against you, the Amorites, and the Perizzite, and the Canaanite, and the Ittite, and the Gerishite, and the Evite, and the Jebusite, and I delivered them into your hand. And I sent the ornate before you, which drew, which drive them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with thy sword, nor with thy bow. And I have given you a land for which ye did not labor, and cities which ye built not, and ye dwell in them. Of the vineyards and the olive yards which ye planted not do ye eat. Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood, and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. We thank God this morning for his words of kindness and wisdom. Now I notice something with Israel. It seems to me that Israel, they trouble with loss of memory. It seems like they somehow have amnesia or they have some kind of forgetfulness sickness. Because if we study the history of Israel and the constant rebellion, it seems to me like these people, they are just bent on wickedness and just doing their own thing. Now, here we see in this reading where Joshua gathered the people together. And he, of course, got a message from the Lord. And so here the Lord was listing out all the things that he had protected the children of Israel from. He spoke about what he did for Abraham, what he did for Jacob and Isaac, how he blessed them. And he spoke about how he protected the children of Israel while, while they were in Egypt. He protected them from the plague and from the hand of Pharaoh. He spoke about the fact that when they left Egypt and, and the army of Pharaoh pursued them, or we protected them, or we drowned the army in the Red Sea. And he spoke about how he protected them from all those different nations that they were passing through when they were going through the wilderness and the different nation that came against them, the Amorites, the Pharisite, the Hittite, and all those people. And the Lord protected them. The Lord delivered them 
from them. The Lord gave them victory. He spoke about Jericho, how he led a victorious battle for them. And they didn't have to lift one sword or one bow. He spoke about Balaam. When Balaam was paid money by the wicked king Bala to curse Israel. And God protected Israel and Balaam blessed Israel instead. And he listed all these things. The fact that they, they conquered the land of Canaan. And they got vineyards and they, they got city to live in that they did not build vineyard that they did not plant it they had all of these things to their disposal god was right there from the beginning taking care of them every step of the way from the moment they woke up in the morning to, until they go to their bed at night even while they were sleeping god was there protecting and keeping them god has never left israel's side and yet still, yet still with all of those things that God has been doing for them, Israel still found a time to rebel against God. They still found a time to erect idol worship, to have false God, to serve other gods, to blaspheme the name of God and to be disobedient and to be ungrateful and the list goes on and on and here now they are at a crossroad and Joshua is saying to them we have erred we have committed a sin against God our fathers they have committed sin against God right throughout our journey up until this point we have been faltering our fathers have faltered they have served the gods of the Egyptian the gods of wood and stone they have just blasphemed the name of God to nothing and now we are at this point where we need to make a choice and the choice is given them based on what the Lord relate to him he says to them the Lord is here he has always been here and now you need to make a choice whom you will serve because we can't continue how we have been continuing and our fathers have done. We need to turn a different direction now. Too long have we un been on that path. And so he told them that if we are to move forward, then we have to make a choice. So if you want to serve the gods of your fathers, then do so. If you want to serve the God of heaven, then do so but you've got to make a choice you can't have it both ways you can't serve the gods of your fathers or the gods of the nations around you and also serve god it doesn't work that way is either one or the other you can't have it both ways this is not burger king and so you got to make a choice so joshua tell them choose you've got to choose and he told them that whatever your choice is if you decide to go with the gods of the Amorites and the surrounding nations, then do so. And if you decide to go with God, then do so. But as for me and my house, and this is where we see the characteristics of a true leader of his home, a true priest of his home, a true man of his home, is standing up for the Lord and leading his family in the right direction. So Joshua said that I, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord because we have seen his work. We have seen all that he has done for us. God has been faithful to us. God has been good to us. And there is no reason for us to turn our backs on God. There is no reason for us to break his heart, to hurt him. He has only been doing good towards us. And so we, my family and I, we are going to walk in the way of the Lord. And I say, Amen. Now, let me bring it home to us now. We ourselves are guilty of some of these very things that Israel were guilty of. We also are serving the gods around us, the gods of the nations around us. Would it be money, cars, whatever, or jobs, or career, or education? And I'm not saying that these things are evil within themselves, but I'm just saying that these things have taken such a priority and such a space in our life that there is no room for God whatsoever. 
And so we set up all of these idols and we have an idol for everything and they are taking our attention away from God. The same God who woke us up this morning, the same God who protected us, the same God who provided our breakfast and our dinner and our lunch, the same God who keep our children from harm and from danger, the same God who provided the job for you, the same God who gave you the education that you have now and the career that you have. The same God who sacrificed himself so that you and I can have eternal life. This very God, we are turning our backs on him. We turn our backs on him. This very God, we find it so hard to give him thanks. It doesn't matter how many times he bless us. It seems that he can't satisfy us. And we have to make a choice too. So we need to decide if we are going to walk with God or we are going to walk with the gods of this earth. But we can't have the world and have Jesus too. We've got to make a choice. And one of the things that we have to understand is that when we make our choice, we must remain resolute to that choice. The choice you make for God are when you make a decision for God. There are many that will think that you have made the biggest mistakes of your life. They might not support you in your decision. But one thing I have learned is that you don't need, and I say it again, you don't need the approval of anybody when you are making the right choice. I can't say it any clearer than that. When you are making a choice for God, it doesn't matter if it is your spouse, your children, your best friend, whomever. If you are making the choice to serve God, you have made the best decision you could ever make. And yes, there are those that would look upon you with scorn. There are those who will ridicule you and they will not give you the support. But the question you should ask yourself is, why do you care? They can't do anything for you. They can't save you. They can't provide for you. They can't give you eternal life. And while it may be nice to have the support of those you love and care about, the truth is that you will not always have that. And so you have to make a choice that regardless of how the noise is around you, regardless of how the support is coming in, or you are going to remain steadfast in your decision and that example can be spread across our entire life meaning that when you make a choice if you are sure in your heart that you made the right choice and if you're doing something that is right if your friends don't support you move on don't start to think in your mind and start to doubt yourself that you have made the right choice or you don't want to look like the outsider and the black sheep so because you don't want to stand out like a sore foot you are going to join them and do what they do so that you can blend in there's no need for us to blend in blending only in those things that will bring God closer to you or bring you closer to God so when we speak about unity and we speak about all of these wonderful things we must not just do it for doing its sake we must make a, a solid decision in our heart to go the direction that we choose to go and when we make that choice we need to stick with it no matter the cost or the consequences because that will help you in your walk and your faith and it will build and strengthen your integrity as a person to know that you made a choice and you are sticking with that choice even if there's no one who think that you have made the right choice so this morning just like joshua i want to say as for me and my house we will serve the lord and i pray that you will say the same prayer this morning too as for you and your house do serve the lord god is good to us he has never done us evil and there's no reason not to serve him there's no reason not to stick with jesus amen and so friends be encouraged let us pray for each other let us stand firm on our belief and on our faith let us press forward look into jesus who is the author 
and the finisher of our faith. May God continue to bless and keep us all as we continue to serve him until his soon return. Amen.